Veterinary surveillance is an important defence in our country's resilience against animal diseases, and vets are on the front line. Worryingly, 37% of vets have reported the closure of their local veterinary laboratory. But the development of innovative projects to collect data on our pets is helping allay concerns. This dairy herd in Liverpool is healthy, thanks to the hard work of the farmer, but also critically, the vigilance of the vet. They're on the front line, always looking out for signs of disease. The 2001 foot and mouth crisis shows just how catastrophic an outbreak can be if not caught early. Thousands of animals were culled and billions of pounds were lost to the economy. The disease was spotted by a vet, but only after it had spread. But of course, it's not just large animals that need protection. A project at the University of Liverpool is attempting to gauge the health of companion species on a national scale. Southsnet takes data direct from vets. Each practice gets its own portal, showing where clients come from, what type of animals they have and why they've come in. The data can then show everything from the frequency of a particular disease to the number of vaccinations. Southsnet will even tell you how your practice compares to others in terms of prescribing antibiotics. I think it gives vets and nurses um, a, a great amount of power. Um, vets can look at the, the results clinically, um, so if they're seeing outbreaks of, of diseases or increased numbers um, of patients presenting with particular diseases. From a nurse perspective, um, I actually get really excited about the portal because I think nurses can use the portal to help plan their nurse clinics, um, give advice. Um, almost be able to show owners an evidence base to say, look, you know, we've got an increased number of animals that are not vaccinated, this increases the risk to your animal, um, and you can really encourage owners to adopt best practice care. But Savsnet doesn't just get data from vets in practice. Much of it comes from diagnostic labs. These often provide a greater source of numbers for crunching. And with increased data, it gets easier to spot rare diseases and catch outbreaks more quickly. Previously, for the, the sorts of populations we were interested in, which is small companion animals, there was no national coordinated activity for disease surveillance. What projects like Southnet and Vet Compass and, and, and other projects that are starting up um, can do is for the first time to allow us to look at diseases in the UK at a truly national level in a way that was completely impossible even five years ago. It's an approach that takes its inspiration from years of good practice on the farm. Surveillance by vets has been key to spotting and stopping the spread of outbreaks. We're continually monitoring for the diseases we know about, some of the diseases that are endemic within the UK or indeed endemic within the, in the farm. But it's equally important to have an oversight of any new emerging threats that we maybe know about but they're not in the UK um, and some that we as yet do not know about. So it's, it's really important to have a good robust network that, uh, that feeds into the whole surveillance picture. But even with the most comprehensive surveillance network, the pressure is on the individual vet to decide when to raise the alarm. Sometimes things simply are unusual. Multiple things come together and, and a herd or a flock has a real problem, but you can get over it. But sometimes they mean something else is happening. Uh, and if you fail to follow through on that, that can be the start of something either devastating for the individual farmer or that might spread to others. The teams behind projects like Savsnet ultimately rely on this sort of veterinary expertise. While the use of technology offers huge potential, it and all surveillance programmes ultimately need data to come from vets who have to make the right call all day, every day.